want to uh, start off tonight by reminding everyone to do something, and what would that be? That would be to mute your phones. Mute your phones, okay? That's what this is called, right? And we don't want any other disturbance, of course. We want uh, to be able to listen to all the notes and uh, the beautiful sounds, and not necessarily your phone ring. So, I'm glad to be here. Are you? Yeah. Wonderful season of the year. And of course, uh, Christmas is always a special time of the year for pre, uh, practicing traditions. For instance, um, where else can you drag a Christmas tree into your living room? and decorate it, and uh, you can make it then an indoor bathroom for your dog. <laughs> Where else can you do that? And, and then you notice how we sit in front of the tree and we eat candy and fruit out of our stuffed stinky socks. Quite a tradition. And I don't want to make you too hungry, but there is a tradition for the Dearborn Heights Citadel Corps, and that's at the onset of every Christmas season this happens. In fact, it's happened for, what, 97 years, and we're once again experiencing it uh, tonight. And so we are thrilled that uh, we can do that, and we can praise God in that manner. And um, the first number here, Eric Silverberg wrote it. It's a set of variations on the John Ellerton's hymn, the day thou gavest. And, and really, he wants to, to, us to keep in mind the majestic words of the final verse. Now, this is found in your songbooks, song number 1039. So if you want to look that up, you can do so. But here's the words. It says, So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never, like earth's proud empires, pass away. Thy kingdom stands and grows forever till all thy creatures own thy sway. So, for right now, tighten your embouchures, take a deep breath, and we'll blow through this. And we'll get, I'm sure, blessed as we hear St. Clement's Variations by Eric Silverberg.
We're privileged this evening to not only be here by ourselves, but uh, we have been joined with the Trenton Church of Christ praise team this evening. And uh, we're going to ask them to come up here right now. And uh, Jim McArdle, if you could just maybe give them a brief explanation of who you are and where you're from. Wow. Thank you very much for having us. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you folks tonight. Uh, we are truly enjoying the, the, the music of the, of the Salvation Army Band. Uh, in my line of work, I get to interface with them on occasion more than most people, and I can tell you this is truly a blessing, and it's truly a blessing for us to be here this evening. Uh, we are the Trenton Church of Christ Praise Team. Uh, start down at the end. Introduce yourselves real quick. I'm Jim McArdle. Melissa Martin. Denise Horton. Dan Martin. And Trey Allen. That's the bass section. <laughs> uh, uh, the songs that we're going to sing, some of them will probably be familiar to you. Some may, may not. Uh, however, we have uh, brought the, so the, the lyrics with us, and they'll be up on the screen. Please feel free to sing along with us. We would really appreciate that. Okay? Two, three. Clap your hands. All ye people, shout to God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands. All ye people, sing for joy unto the Lord. Singing alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. So clap your hands, all ye people, shout to God. Woo! With a voice of triumph, clap your hands. All ye people, sing for joy unto the Lord. Singing alleluia, 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 alleluia. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. The Ancient of Days, the God of our Fathers, and God of our Praise, the Alpha Omega, beginning and end, forever and ever, your kingdom will stand. We come to bow before you now. We come to lay our lives down. We will have no other gods before you. Nothing on earth will compete for your throne. You are the sovereign I am, and you reign in our hearts alone. We will exalt you on high forever, King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We will have no other gods before you. Our maker, creator, before time began, Messiah and Savior, Redeemer and friend, a rock of salvation, so faithful and true. 
we give all the glory and honor to you. For you alone are worthy of our never-ending love. We will have no other gods before you. Nothing on earth will compete for your throne. You are the sovereign I am, and you reign in our hearts alone. We will exalt you on high forever, King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We will have no other gods before you. We will have no other gods before you. Nothing on earth will compete for your throne. You are the sovereign I am and you reign in our hearts alone. We will exalt you on high forever king of all kings and the lord of all lords we will have no other gods before you and all god's people say amen even had the soloist at the end there. But uh, we're grateful for you to come and be with us. And uh, we have uh, already enjoyed your ministry and expect that uh, God will use you again as we uh, further our time together. Um, I have a question though. What Dr. Seuss book do they read every morning in Canada? Tom Horton's Here's a Who. It sure is Tim, right. <laughs> Should we try that again? Tim Hortons, here's a who. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. My eyes aren't as good as they, they used to be. Uh, but uh, we're able to hear a, a who by the name of uh, the Canadian compose, composer Kenneth Smith, who wrote this uh, next march, which will be played. It was, wrote for, uh, it was written for the Canadian staff band when they visited Britain in 1985. And uh, that's why you'll hear these two British national airs. God bless the Prince of Wales and rule Britannia. So in true Canadian dialect, we can grade this musical piece an A. For sure. So listen as the band plays a march, Britannia. <laughs>
that did deserve the A, that's for sure. And uh, I was just I, I was watching the cornet session, so I thought I'd better run up here and give them a break here. I can let them, you know, rest their lips a little before their next number. For the next music piece on the program, um, I, I did ask the bandmaster how he was able to get a commitment for someone to play a euphonium solo. And he simply stated, well, euphonium up and ask him. <laughs> well, as a result, uh, we get to enjoy Eric Silverberg's. Are you done? <laughs> he wants me done, okay. Uh, well, this is Eric Silverberg's arrangement of a new rhythmic, of a new rhythmic tune to uh, much loved old lyrics. Uh, it cites, oh, how I love the Savior's name, the Swedish, oh, that's the sweetest name on earth. Okay. See, I'm using your jokes, Ed, you know? <laughs> you recognize those. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this is, this is going to be great, and uh, we're going to sit back. We're going to relax to the relaxed, it said in the, in, the, in the notes, and the not hurried, lyrical, euphonium solo, The Savior's Name, as played by Major Ed Rowland. Thank you. 
And um, the Savior's name, there's a name I love to hear. Uh, and this morning uh, in our worship service, I read this before we, <clears throat> before we led worship this morning. It comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians in the second chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God to be something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And in listening to that song, I, I was just moved uh, to share that with you because it's something that we share. That in this place, in this moment, together, we will confess the name of Jesus in some of the best ways we know how through the songs that we share. Amen? Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise his name from the ends of the earth. From the depths of the sea, let all creation praise his name. Hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. So we're going to try, we, we kind of sort of know all our songs by heart, but Oh, is it coming back? All right. So we'll go ahead and start this song, and hopefully we won't mess it up too bad. So, ready, one, two. I am weak, but you are strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, O oh Lord, close to you. Closer, closer, closer to you. Closer, closer. Closer to you. Through this world of toils and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me, my burden? 
heaven shares none but you oh lord none but you closer 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 to you closer i want to be closer closer to you when my feeble life is o'er time for me will be no more guide me to that peaceful shore let it be O oh lord close to you Thank you for that song, and of course, when we get closer to God, we get closer to each other, right? And we know uh, where we have our, um, our, where we can identify with one another and give help and uh, to each other as well. So uh, it was very fitting that we had that song before our next um, number, which will be played. And um, the prayer was written by David Foster and. Carol Bayer Sager. It was released in 1999 as a vocal duet made popular by recording artists uh, Celine Dion and Andrea Boschelli. That's my Italian accent there. Sorry. It was um, Roger Trigg, though, that uh, composed the musical arrangement for brass band of performance. And, uh, playing a horn is something like uh, something divine because man after creation of course blew it but God through Christ's death can make beautiful music out of our lives and this is evident in the next musical piece where you pray for yourselves the prayer to God I pray you'll be in our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our way. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace to a place where we'll be safe. For there's no safer place but in the arms of Jesus. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 tells us, You are faithful, Lord, faithful to strengthen and protect us from the evil one. I trust in your faithfulness. And let's listen now to the prayer. <laughs>
Captain Shannon Martinez, and over the past couple weeks um, here at church during our Sunday school opening, um, adults and children alike, we've been studying Philippians chapter 4. So we had Philippians 2 spoken earlier in a beautiful um, letter written by Paul to the church of... I, and chapter 4 is very near and dear to my heart. And my mother taught it to me at a very young age um, to a little girl who really struggled with anxiety and um, worried just about everything. And so she made me memorize the scripture at a very young age to help me. And so I knew that I could um, take all of my prayers and my petitions, my worries, before the Lord. But sometimes um, we get comfortable, we get used to things, and we hear it repeated so often that we miss the boat, right? I don't know if you're like me, but um, I'm really good at listing my prayers and my petitions and knocking on heaven's gate. Dear Lord, help! I need you once again. It's Monday morning. We've missed the bus. And now I've got to get the boys to school. It's Tuesday morning. We've missed the bus again, Lord. Please, just one day this week. I'd really like to get down there on time. Um, we did have a Monday morning miracle about a week ago, which all of us were like, we're running down the street and we turn the corner. The bus isn't there yet. There's still kids. It's a Monday morning miracle. Thank you, Jesus. I'm really good about listing. Lord, I need your help. This is a, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about this. I've got great concerns about this, Lord. And then I'm, I'm waiting. Like, all right, I'm ready for that peace that surpasses all understanding right now, right? Because you say in Philippians 4, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Right. Make your requests known before the Lord, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, I go before the Lord. Lord, this is really bothering me. This is really making those butterflies in my stomach. All right, I'm getting a little hot here because I'm almost to a panic attack. Lord, I'm waiting for your peace to come. <laughs> Not feeling it, Lord. Okay. So I know also that the Lord is not messing up. <laughs> so what am I doing incorrectly? What am I missing? And prayer has this partner that we often get pushed, kind of push away, thinking it's, it's not really important. It's a once a year meal that you eat, uh, you know, and it's just all this feasting and it's fun and it's great and it's fall and it's leaves, it's, it's Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is actually prayer's really necessary partner. Um, the scriptures often put two things together to really work together. And prayer and Thanksgiving are two things that actually must be joined all the time. And you look about at it in the Old Testament, and we look at it with offerings and sacrifices that were presented before the altar at the temple or the tabernacle even before that. And we often think of, oh yeah, there were offerings and sacrifices of the, the bull or the ram or the goat or the lamb and the blood sacrifices. Or we, re we remember, oh yeah, there were also um, the grain offerings. The first fruits of the harvest would be presented before the Lord. But what we often oversee, but we've been studying in our Monday night women's Bible study, is that there was a sacrifice of thanksgiving expected along with their animal, wheat, and grain sacrifices. So when they presented these sacrifices, it was an expectation that while doing it, they would present a thanksgiving sacrifice, an offering of thanksgiving. And if we think that that was just a menial part of the sacrifice, we learn in 1 Chronicles that some were even appointed to the office of giving thanks. Once again, I really want that office, right? Like, make me in charge of giving thanks. What do you do for a living? Oh, I give thanks. It doesn't pay all that great, but it <laughs> makes me feel really good. <laughs> And, and then what's awesome, and one of my favorite, favorite parts of how Thanksgiving was used within the Old Testament is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Um, it says, in, uh, beginning in chapter 20, uh, verses 20 and 21, they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa, 
And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Put your trust in prophets, and you, succeed, you will succeed. When, so when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army sang, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. Before shields, before weaponry, before the soldiers, people stood and gave thanks before the Lord, and that's what preceded the army. That's how they entered battle. I mean, can you imagine, have we ever thought to enter the day's battle with thanksgiving or the hectic day with praise? I often don't. Yet, in Colossians, we know that it tells us to devote ourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And Paul says, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Paul, chained, jailed, imprisoned, not his first time, says this, and he says it to another church. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So when we find ourselves chained by fear or imprisoned with anxieties, we fight back with a double-edged sword of prayer and, what? Thanksgiving. We present our requests, petitions, with thanksgiving. That's how we fight. So when I am, once again, just overwhelmed with life, overwhelmed with boys, overwhelmed with, with so much stuff and expectations, and, and I just, I'm done with it all. And I want that peace that surpasses all understanding, that peace that overflows in the craziest situations, in situations where I shouldn't feel peace. I know God can give it. And how do I get it? I get it with thanksgiving. Dear Lord, thank you so much. The, I got the boys awake this morning, okay. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I did remember to feed them breakfast today. Oh, everyone's got a lunch in their backpack. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your, your ministry to me. Thank you for calling me to minister to others. Thank you. There's so much to be thankful for. Amen? And as it says in Psalm 103, 2, it says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. When we are thanking the Lord, our focus is changed, not on all those things that I just cannot handle, but on all of the things that God has handled already for me. And, and it's not this Pollyanna approach either. Um, it's so much more than that. And it's funny to me, too, how, biblically speaking, God presents something that um, might not make sense at that time. Like, even the, the small thing of, like, washing hands. It sounds funny. In Levitical, um, uh, Leviticus, it talks so much about, you know, wash your hands and wash your hands and wash your hands. Yet, during that time, washing your hands would, would kind of sound a little bit odd. And, and then, quite honestly, it wasn't even um, really seen as important until the 1800s. Right? So you're talking thousands of years later, people all of a sudden realized, huh, we really should be washing our hands more often. God was on to something all those years ago. Who would have thought? And today you can read countless articles that are telling people, you know what, we've actually been amazed to find out that if you keep a, a journal of gratitude, it has now been proven by secular psychologists even, um, that your health can be completely changed, that you'll sleep better, that it lowers your cholesterol, that it lowers your blood, blood pressure, that a thankful heart can have a physical difference in you. What? You mean God was on to something again? God knew that his body that he created here on earth, that, that it needed, its will was to be appreciative of what he had given. And so we thank the Lord this morning. We praise him and we remember his good things. And we add our prayer with our thanksgiving.
There's a video um, that's been popular. Um, the gentleman wakes up and he's got wrapping paper all over his face. Have you seen this video? And he tears it off and he's just really excited to be awake and then he looks over and it's, his wife's there and she jumps up uh, out, of, out of the covers and she's got wrapping paper all over, Christmas wrapping paper all over her face and he tears it off and he's excited to see her. And then the kids run into the bedroom and they've got wrapping paper. They're, they're waddling in, covered in wrapping paper. And then uh, later on in the video, he's, he's given this, this object, which is obviously a briefcase, and he recognizes it, but it's wrapped in, um, in wrapping paper. And he's just so excited to get that. You mean I have a job? And then he gets a set of keys, and it's not a new car outside. It's the same old car that he's had, but it's wrapped in wrapping paper. And the expression is to be thankful for what you have. I've had the opportunity, if you will, to um, test that in my own life uh, over the last couple of weeks. I've had a lot of dental work done. Um, I should have gone to therapy for all the issues that have happened to me from dental work. I got slapped by my dentist once when I was younger. <laughs> Apparently, I was biting him, and I did not know it. Um, so uh, I was at the dentist this week getting an old filling replaced. Um, and then as I've gone into the week, it was a pretty, pretty deep, deep, um, deep filling. Over the last week and a half or so, I still have uh, residual pain from that. I mean, it's getting better, um, but I've been challenged, uh, perhaps in prepping for tonight even. Uh, well, I'm thankful, Lord, that I've got a dentist and insurance that I can go and get that taken care of. Um, and then it made me think a little bit about sin. And uh, while sin might leave scars, it doesn't oppress. And ultimately, um, I may still suffer from the consequences of my actions of sin, just like I suffer from the consequences of my bad eating habits as a child. Um, but someday that'll be made new. So it's not that uh, there'll be no cr more crying. It's there'll be no more cavities when we get to, to heaven for me. Um, but not everybody has those same uh, ability to, to be thankful. I, we recognize that uh, life is different for some people, and, and the struggle is much more difficult for others. Um, where I can be um, thankful and give praise to God for insurance, maybe there's some of us today that you've got an issue, and it's like, I'd love to give thanks to God for insurance. Or there's something else in your life that for, 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 for us it's easy to give thanks for. Maybe we had a mother that taught us how to pray and to memorize scripture because we had a godly parent. But for others of us, uh, my parents were anything but godly examples and I still struggle from that. And so the challenge is in our lives, can we still find a reason to be thankful? And not knowing everyone's situation here, I admit that for some of us, it may be a little bit more difficult to dig deep and find that source of thanksgiving, but it's there. It's there. And uh, so I just want to ask this evening, um, or give you the opportunity to, to reflect on that for a moment. Um, maybe you've got the world at your feet, and yet there's still thanksgiving. That's a challenge to come by. Or maybe um, you're um, struggling by the skin of your teeth, and you're having a difficult time finding to be something uh, thankful for. We all have that same temptation and potential, no matter what we have or don't have. But Thanksgiving is something that um, we can all um, take advantage of and enjoy, even through the difficult times. So I'm going to pray, and I just want to encourage you, especially as we sing this next song. It's a little more upbeat, so it's not necessarily prayerful, but still, use it as a prayer time. Come, you thankful people, as Major Jane comes and leads that song after I pray. Um, and I, I hope that we're all thankful people in this room tonight, wherever we find ourselves. Heavenly Father, we pray for Thanksgiving. Um, we know that perhaps we even need to ask you to provide us with the opportunity to give thanks. Um, uh, it's not as evident uh, or it's not as obvious to us. But because we believe in you and because we know that you are faithful, uh, we can find reason to give you praise and honor and to be thankful even through the difficult circumstances that we're going through. And uh, we, we pray, we petition with thanksgiving this evening that you would be in control of our lives and that there would be something that um, transforms us 
so that uh, the world will know that you are good, you are true, you are real, and um, you have um, heaven awaiting for all of us if we would choose your name tonight um, and in our lives. So this evening, continue to honor our time together, continue to um, be pleased and blessed by our gathering, and let us be thankful people this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand, please, where you are. The band is going to lead us in this old harvest hymn, Come ye thankful people, come. You may be seated. You may have noticed, like everybody standing behind me or sitting behind me noticed, it said offering during that last one. You might have thought, ah, they forgot about the offering. Sweet. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> Just to let you know, you may not know, this group behind us, this band, we are self-sustaining, meaning that those red kettles that you see out on the streets, we don't, we don't take any of that money for this band. We, we raise our money once a year right here with our annual Thanksgiving festival. When we come to our, our people that have come out and we ask you to be generous in your giving to us so that we can purchase our music and our instruments and that sort of thing. And it's all very costly and it just keeps going up, up, up and up. And even everybody sitting behind me pays dues to be in this band. You guys all pay dues behind me. <laughs> but uh, so just so you know that that's what this, this concert is tonight. We come to fellowship, but we also come to raise money to support the, the ministry of this band. So uh, as the ushers are coming forward, we are going to take an offering. And uh, if you noticed on when you came in out there, there's a little round table right outside the uh, doors there. And it says, CDs available for any donation. We would love for you to take a CD home with you. There's, a couple, there, there's nothing recent, no, nothing hot off the press. Uh, one of them is a compilation CD. I think it's got some numbers from 1966 all the way up through probably 2007, somewhere in there. 
And it's just, it's all live recordings, most of them made right here for, uh, our, from our Thanksgiving festivals. And then there's one, I think, from our 90th anniversary uh, Thanksgiving concert. That's also out there. But you'll see a little box that says suggestions. That used to be in the band room. That was a suggestion box that one of our former bandmasters wanted put up. But uh, we found out there were a lot of comedians in the band. There were no suggestions as to what to play, but other suggestions. So the suggestion box didn't stay up on the wall very long. And uh, <laughs> it's just kind of been kicking around, but I thought it's a good thing to collect donations. And so for anything you'd like to throw in the box, please help yourself and uh, take a CD home with you. And uh, let's just pray. And uh, before I do, this march that we're going to play is a quick step. So there's not much time. You got to reach in and grab fast because they think it only, only lasts about two minutes. All right. So start digging now and uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the, uh, the privilege of coming together here. And Lord, we we praise your name tonight, Lord. We, we praise it in music and in song, Lord, and we just ask that all that is said and all that is done here this evening, Lord, would bring honor and glory to your name. We thank you for the gifts that we are about to receive, Lord. Help us to spend those gifts wisely, Lord, and use them to further your kingdom. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> brisk. Felt like you were in Manhattan, didn't it? You know, downtown Manhattan, that hurried pace. And uh, certainly, um, we got through it. You know, there was no accidentals. Uh. <laughs> well, maybe the band would say otherwise. I don't know. But during the Christmas season, people, uh, some for selfish reasons, start to believe in Santa Claus, you know. Who, by the way, I hear is uh, bipolar. Uh, but uh, people have faith that this gift giver will be generous to them because of their good behavior. You know, they're, they've been nice and not naughty. Now, if this is so, then all these band members should expect nothing for Christmas because they're in trouble for playing around. But as, as Christians, though, our faith is in the real gift giver. The Apostle Paul wrote, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
1 Corinthians 15, 57. I got one person to react to that. I, I better try it again. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And knowing this, we can have then a happy holiday. Knowing this then, we can have a very Merry Christmas. Knowing this, we can have a jubilant faith. And that's what the band's going to play next. <laughs> Thank you. 
we've had such a wonderful time uh, sharing and praising uh, and worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ tonight with you. Uh, we're going to finish with two songs that we think you know. Um, and uh, the words, of course, will be up on the screen. Um, the first is um, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. The second one will be I Will Rise. Uh, by all means, please uh, uh, participate with us and uh, share in this moment with us. The grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise. 
rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. It's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and i will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain i will rise on eagle's wings before my god fall on my knees and rise i will rise and i hear the voice of many angels sing worthy is the lamb and i hear the cry of every longing heart Worthy is the Lamb, and I hear the voice of many angels sing. Worthy is the Lamb, and I hear the cry of every longing heart. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy guys wait up here for a second? Just wait here for a second? Sorry. Well, we, we have just one more song. Um, this has gone a lot faster than practices. This is good. Um, but we want to have Chuck. Why don't you come to the front, please? Uh, would you show your appreciation for our bandmaster, Charles Chuck McDougall? Uh, we're very, very grateful for um, uh, the... Um, Excuse me, Trenton uh, Church of Christ. We're, we're glad you're here. And I, I want to highlight, um, they're here. There's no gratuity, no stipend. They're just good neighbors and taking a, an opportunity to continue to share their gifts and the message of Christ. And so would you show them um, some more appreciation this evening? Uh, I want to thank you for your uh, generous um, encouragement this evening as we've gone through the songs. Um, it's very, uh, very appreciative. And as, as the bulletin says, your ever long support of the ministry. This is, this is our first, Shannon and I's first Thanksgiving concert. We haven't been, this is one out of 97 that we've got to. Um, but uh, certainly um, some of you have been for, around for, for quite a while and have witnessed quite a few. And so I hope this, uh, not that we would rank any of them, but I hope for today 
this met your need and for this season, it's leaving you with an opportunity to be a little bit more thankful this year. So I want to ask you to applaud yourselves and I want to ask the band to applaud our congregation this evening. We want to thank, uh, they don't get enough credit. Um, they usually only get glares. Uh, but we want to thank Brett and Bill in the back for all of their hard work, not just tonight, for, but when, whenever they're on the sound system. Major Russ, do you have any closing arguments? OK. Well, let, we, uh, there's something we're missing, I think. So you can come up in just a second. Um, we want to thank Major Russ for his, um, his master of ceremonies. He certainly was a master this evening. And then he'll come up in just a minute. We'll sit down. We've got one more song, Carol of the Bells. This is a teaser for December 17th. So now, if you want to get your phones out, it would be a good time to do that. Put December 17th in your calendar, Sunday, December 17th, 7 6 o'clock, to be back here for our Christmas concert. So, Major Russ, if you want to share something, we'll get ready to, for our last song. Give me a mic. I'm all ready. But it was... Leonard Bernstein that said, uh, music can name the unnameable and communicate the unknowable. I like that quote. You can name the unnameable and, commu uh, and communicate the unknowable. And, and throughout our moments together tonight, we, we heard through music the name of God being honored and the cause of Christ communicated. And so now it's up to us to take this message out of these doors and into the world and to proclaim the gospel, especially at this time of, of year. Tell it out with a shout, we say in the Salvation Army, Christ for the whole wide world. Well, Carol of the Bells is a well-known carol based on a Ukrainian folk chart composed by Mykola Leontovich in 1914, and the lyrics by Peter Wilhowski. And Warren Brooks has, has skillfully arranged the traditional Christmas carol, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, in this fashion and form, and it provides for us really a, a modern rock rendition played with plenty of energy and drive. So, we're gonna leave the driving to the band, and we'll enjoy the ride. <laughs> 